This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. I am back to where I am meant to be, back to pure source energy that I am part of, the energy that we are all a part of. We are one from the creator of the universe. Each one of us is an extension, a branch of that energy in physical form. We are the same in spiritual form, thus different in physical form. We are brothers and sisters with different abilities, mindsets, and paradigms so that we can co-create with each other with the union of pure energy, our source, the infinite intelligence. The life that each of us has experienced in this world is unique to each and every one. The ones who are similar attract each other in the vibrational world, and together they create momentum, either good or bad. The power of choice is vested in each individual, and it is what it is. It is life on earth, It is who I am, and it starts with me. Valeria Tellez interviews Mina Vo, the author of Start With Me, Who Am I? Discovering Yourself with the Law of Attraction. Mina Vo is a law of attraction coach who specializes in personal growth, self-confidence, leadership, and career transformation coaching. Her passion is helping entrepreneurs and career women to find their purpose in life. She serves as a private practitioner working with a broad spectrum of clients. In addition to being a professional business coach, she also presented nationally to general audiences speaking on the topics of goal setting with the law of attraction concepts and processes. She is a collaborative, solution-focused business coach. Through this approach, she provides support and practical feedback to help clients effectively address personal life changes. She also integrates coaching techniques and helpful assignments to offer highly personalized programs tailored to you. With compassion and understanding, she works with you to help build on your strengths and attain the personal growth you are committed to achieving. Knowing that her work can help someone who might influence others to become better with their positive attitude and mindset, to become more conscious about their strengths and weaknesses, so that they can help themselves and others around them to live harmoniously with each other. She can then say, my mission is accomplished. Meet Mina at minavocoaching.com. Here's the interview with Mina Vo. In your own words, who is Mina Vo? Um, Mina Vo is, I would consider myself now as a spiritual teacher, uh, as um, the last um, interview that you asked me that question, I mentioned that I am both the non-physical and the physical being and it's still the same. I have my soul and my 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 bone and flesh as Mina. Um, so for me, I am more and more um, in a position of understanding consciousness more now than I was before. So I see myself as um, a spiritual spiritual teacher now. What is your idea of spirituality, Mina, as of today? Well, spirituality for me uh, is nothing to do with the religion or anything. It's more of um, awakening 
of consciousness, of knowing who you are and what you want, of knowing yourself first. Uh, as I, I say in my book, when you don't know yourself, then you cannot communicate what you are wanting to your environment, to the people around you. So first of all, to be conscious of, and be aware of who you are and what you want. And that is the important thing. And that is spiritual for me. It is to live the life of uh, knowing who you are in order to lead your life. And once you are the leader of your life, then you can lead somebody else around you, right? So, um, yeah, it, it's more of awareness, of consciousness, of of knowing to put yourself in a position um, of happiness, of joys, of love, mm. so that you can manifest what you want in life. And that is the important thing. And, and that is the essence of life, right? You mentioned your book. So you have a new book coming up, will be published on June 7th. And that the title yes. is Start with me, who am I? Discovering yourself with the law of attraction. So I'll be asking you questions about your book in the moment, Mina. I'll go sure. deeper into it. For now, the law of attraction, of course, so many of us have heard about the law of attraction. Some of us have practiced the law of attraction. But from your perspective and experience, what is the law of attraction? Well, uh, the law of attraction, a lot of people um, talk about it, but I find that people kind of uh, scraping on the surface of that knowledge. If you want to really know about the law of attraction, is to know about yourself first, for me. Uh, because whatever you think will attract to you, for sure, but if you want to manifest what you want in life, you have to put yourself in a position of receiving it. And in order to put yourself in a position of receiving it is to be yourself, be joyful, be happy where you are right now and now and not yesterday and not the day after kind of. So most of the time when people are asking for something and they're not receiving it is because they are putting themselves in a position of frustration or lack of I'm, I'm not having enough money or I'm not having the love that I want today. So you're putting yourself in a lack position and guess what? You are going to attract more and more of that. So my message for the people who want to attract or manifest what they want in life is to relax, just let go of, of anything that frustrates you, even though the things that are not related to what you're asking for. And this is important because if, if you are frustrated about something and your mind will attract that energy to you, and guess what? You are creating momentum of that negative emotion and there will be no place for your energy inside of you to concentrate or focus on the things that you are asking for, which is the things that you want to manifest into your life. So so I, I don't know if you get you, you 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 get what I want to say, but that is the secret of the law of attraction. And people just say, "Oh, just just asking, and 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 you go, you will get it." But that is deep down for the law of attraction. More than that, it's just everything that you do every day, every day, even though it's not relating to what you're asking for, like something. Um, your kids or your husband or your wife say to you and you are frustrated about that, it, it, it's affecting your asking of what, you're, of what you want to receive. So it's important to, to be conscious. I think that word is very powerful. Consciousness, awareness, 
is important. I just give you an example. Yesterday, my um, my husband was very well. Well, he he is impatient, and uh, and uh, um, he got a call uh, from from my son. He is asking if we need something. He is on the way home, and he can can buy it for us. And he he my husband was sleeping, and when the phone rang, and it just wake him up, and he was impatient, and he just. Uh, uh, frustrated about that, and uh, when I I come up and ask him to pass me the phone to 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 give the message to my son, he he kind of uh, telling me a, a hard way, and um, usually before I would take it personally, but since I I have been working on myself, my consciousness. My awareness, I just come up calmly and I say, "Okay, give me the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass the message to him." So my husband just feel bad after that, and I, after that, at the supper, I just do like nothing had happened. I just love him. I just, I just spread my positive energy to him. And this morning, he he apologized me for what he did yesterday. So you know, when you you put yourself in a position of positive energy, nothing will will bother you, nothing will frustrate you. And guess what? You are going to inspire order around you, and you help them to change. And that's what I love about uh, consciousness and awareness. And that relate to the law of attraction. What is your suggestion for the practice of being more conscious? What do we have to do from moment to moment? Being aware, is that enough and conscious enough? Or do we need to engage in specific types of practices? Uh, of course, we have to engage in the practice in order to get into the habit of that. I do my meditation every day. In the morning, especially when I wake up, I I discipline myself to wake up either between four and five in the morning, and I take 15 minutes for my meditation. And in the meditation, I just concentrate on my breathing. And that is where you can connect to consciousness, to um, the infinite intelligence, if I can say it. And... You can ask anything in that moment and wait for the answer and don't expect the answer to come uh, at that moment. You will have inspiration during the day or any other moment. Um, you, you will never know. But that is the practice to calm your mind down. Because we, we as I said last time, I think we were born with a program. We are a program Uh, by our parents, our peers, our teachers, government, whoever are surrounding us. And we are programmed until now. And that program runs inside of us like a computer. And the reaction that we react to the outside world through our five senses is based on the program. It's just running automatically from inside to the outside. But once you are conscious about that program inside of you, then you can change, right? You are like a programmer of a computer. The computer, uh, we are like a computer. We, the, the program is inside of us. We can't change that program unless we are aware of that. We cannot change uh, if we, we, we're not aware of it. So to be aware, to be conscious is to calm your mind down, to meditate. And I cannot say enough of that. Meditate, meditate, meditate. And somebody say, yeah, it's hard for me to meditate. Do it anyway if you want mm. to manifest <laughs> what you want in life. Do it. <laughs> uh, wow. That's another beautiful answer to that question uh, of practice. What are the practices to become more conscious and aware? So true. So the idea is to calm, quiet the mind because a lot of the times our minds are already programmed. They're very much programmed mm -hmm. to react, right, Mina? Mm -hmm. And another thing too, Valeria, is if I can take just one minute to tell you, that is the mind, but the body too, our body, our physical form, we have to take care of that too. 
So after meditation, you can take 15 or 30 minutes to do exercise, the yoga or something. Doing exercise will help your brain to function, to bring oxygen into your brain and it function more efficiently, if I can say. What do you feel is the purpose of your life and how did you get to have that sense of purpose? How did you discover that? I discovered, I think I got um, a book a few years ago uh, from uh, that is from Simon Sinek, Start With Why. And from there, I bought another book from him, is Find Your Why. But uh, that is the start of my thinking about, about my purpose. But still, I find it, um, it it's too much, uh, not deep down in, in, in what we can lead people into finding their purpose in life. Um, because it's, it's more of the environment teaching, uh, change, change your mindset according to your environment. But the thing is, for me, you cannot change your environment. You can only change yourself and then your environment will cope with you. And uh, be detached from the environment. Don't react to the environment. And, and, and that is the important thing. So to go back to your question, my purpose, now that I find that... Um, I know about the law of attraction and I know about consciousness and awareness. Um, for me, um, life, of course, I want to have this and to have that, to have a better life, to be um, joyful, to be healthy. But beside that, I want to live a legacy to the world. And for me, writing books, is the only thing to to live uh, to the next generation in order to know what we have learned now and then we can learn from us later you know because we are now here today with this generation in the world is because we have learned from the history we have learned from the books that people have written before us so why not continue that habit of writing. I, I believe every one of us, we have a story to tell. We have something to teach to other people. Even though you have a small book or a small idea, write them down, put it in books and put it out into the world. So my purpose is writing. And I, I love writing now and, and also teaching and spreading the message of, of joys, of peace, of love, of um, attracting um, what you want into your life. So I, I would love to um, show people how to manifest what they want in life by using the law of attraction. So that's where uh, the book, Who Am I? Um, Start With Me, Who Am I? Uh, come from. So uh, that is my purpose. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love the way you talk to me off record about being guided by the spirit, by this mm -hmm. divine force to do what you do. That resonates so true to my heart. Thank you so much, Mina, for being you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so beautiful and kind. <laughs> so again, going back to your book, Start With Me, Who Am I?, Talk to me about the main intention of writing your book. What was the inspiration as well? I'd love to hear that. Um, the inspiration uh, is because I see people, a lot of people, um, when we talk about the law of attraction, um, they they say, oh, oh, we know that. You're just thinking about positive thing." And uh, as I said to you earlier, I find on the market um, everything about the law of attraction, manifestation of what you want in life is it's not deep down. And um, and for me, uh, it's it's not only thinking about positive thing. It's the feelings, is the emotion, is the knowing of who you are and knowing your program, your paradigm. And that is the important thing. 
So once you know where you come from, what you have programmed into your mind, and the will to change it, to change for a better version of yourself. And once you know about that, then you can manifest whatever you want in life. And I am living it right now. I can tell you I manifest uh, little things every day because I put myself in a position of not uh, frustrating. Like sometimes I have to meet deadline and I, uh, I, I have to work hard, but at a certain point, I have to be conscious. And that was the program that was running inside my mind. And I say to myself, okay, Mina, just let it go. Just calm yourself down. Whatever will happen, will happen. And you are now living in the now and enjoy the moment you are right now. And that is the important thing. And I want to, I want to people to know about that, to know how to do it in order to manifest because we know the love attraction, but we don't know the how to do it. And I think Esther through Abraham Hicks, if you know them, I listen a lot to them. And I think I got the essence of their teaching now. I got it. So that, that's what I want to, to write this book to emphasize more on, on, on the who we are and what we want. Because most people don't know what they want. They just go in line with, with desires. But really deep down, what is your wanting? What is your purpose? What is your why? Mm, wow, so, so true. So that you can manifest it. So true. I love the way you say that most people, they want things, but it's coming from desires, really. Mm. How do we know, how do we learn to know the difference, Mina, between our desires, our dreams, our wishes, and what we truly want? It's, it's, it's not easy to um, separate the, the two. Um, I think, first of all, is to sit down and uh, take a pen and a paper and write down. Um, in the book, I have exercises after every chapter that you can do exercise on that and it will help you to think more about who you are and what you want. But um, uh, just take a pen and a paper and write down where you are right now. Are you satisfied with your life right now? And what do you want? Who do you want to be in a year, two years, or three years from now? Uh, what do you want to have? So write them down. And from there, you can figure out the way to do it, the how to do it. But first of all, just to write down the things that you want. Most people will say, I want to win a lottery. I want to have a lot of money. But not that's not specific. It's not, you have to exchange something for that, right? Not, it's the, the law of action and reaction. Everything you receive, you have to give back. You cannot receive only and not giving back. It will be a blockage in you. So, yeah, so, so everything you are asking the universe for, you have to write down, okay, what are the services? What are the things that I can do to others in order to exchange for what I wanting? I'm wanting kind of, so, you know what I mean? So just, just write down, write down what you want and how to do it. You, you, you'll figure it out when, when you practice meditation and you have your mind calm down and then the inspiration will come to you. So true. Writing is such a beautiful way to make what we want clear. That has been my mm -hmm. experience. The more I write about it, the more I see <laughs> clearly mm -hmm. what is true and what's not true, what's real and not, what's not real. So, yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful advice. Not just an advice, but this is a, it seems like a practice for life, right, Mina, for those who want to manifest yeah. and, and live this joyful, peaceful life. Yeah, because, you know, for me, uh, we are on this planet with two entities, 
the soul and the physical form. The soul is the non-physical and the physical form. Our soul from come from source energy, from the inner being, from the infinite intelligence. And that is always in the position of love, peace, happiness, joyful. And the soul always position into what we are wanting as a physical form. The physical form is us, is Mina, is asking for something to be appear physically so that I can see, I can manifest it in life. It's already given to me in that non-physical form where it is right now. My job as a physical form, as a Mina in flesh and bone is to do and align with that non-physical form in order to manifest what I'm asking for. So whenever I am frustrated, I am in a negative position, I'm, I'm, uh, I am in a fear, uns uncertainty of unhappiness, I am not aligned with my soul and I am not going to manifest what I want because what I'm wanting is where my soul, my inner being is in the vortex and it, and if i'm not positioned myself in order to receive what i'm wanting mm -hmm. i'll never get to there where i want to be that's another insightful message <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense of course yeah because we are spiritual beings and then mm -hmm. what we are trying to do is to bring almost bring the spirit to earth so, uh -huh. and that's our work, isn't it? We are uh, spiritual um, being experiencing um, non uh, non spiritual um, experience. We are spiritual being experiencing the physical form on planet Earth. Going back again to your book, it will be published on June 7th, and you will also have a offering for those who want to order the book through your website. You will have a link that you send it to me, and then I'll have that link on your podcast profile once it's published, it's released. Would you like to make a comment about that, Mina? Sure, sure, yes. Um, this book, I have it published. I'm self-published, but I have a publisher who helped me in the journey for that. And it has marked a publishing international. And what they have is they have a um, what they call is the AR artificial reality, I think, augmented reality. Yeah, augmented and, right. and Yes, I don't know if you know about that. I don't. I have here's a question, actually. Thank you for, for mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about that. <laughs> yes, this augmented reality is exclusive to them. They have an app that you can download onto your iPad or onto your phone. And then uh, um, with the picture of, my, of the cover of my book, you can just put your phone with the app there and then it will appear a video of my message um, um, for the book and in that video i was talking about um whoever ordered the book um is going to have um a link if you are um adhere to the membership uh, of my website then you will be um, automatically, automatically have a link that whoever you share that link uh, that um, about my book and your friends or your relatives will buy the book, uh, you will uh, have a commission for that, affiliate to that. Uh, that is the part of um, on my site for the membership website, but for your audience, uh, Valeria, if I'm going to send you the link for that, uh, if people buy uh, my book from uh, the link that I sent to you on the, um, your social media or on the platform that you will put on, uh, I will offer your, your audience um, a discovery call um, they will have uh, maybe 30 minutes or 
45 minutes with me. And they can ask me about uh, the law of attraction and I can coach them on that. Mm. So that is my gift to your audience. Thank you so much, Mina, for the gift and for the gift that you are with your message too. Because we are very much in need of that. I think we have always been in a way, but at this time more than ever. So thank you so much for doing what you do. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I know. You're so enthusiastic about these things. I love that too. I can hear in your voice <laughs> how <laughs> joyful you are to share uh, these beautiful mm-hmm. messages, profound messages. Do you meet new clients online, in person, individual groups and corporations as well? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm now coaching a group coaching with the entrepreneurs um, locally here uh, in where I live. Uh, but I still, yes, doing um, my service online. If people want to reach to me, it's still minervocoaching.com. Um, I'm about to revamp the, the website a little bit too, to align with uh, my teaching right now. But uh, the website is still functional, so um, yeah, people can can join me uh, on minavocoaching.com and uh, they can contact me via the, that website. I'll have the link on the podcast profile once it's released as well. So thank you. Going back to your book, I have so many passages here in chapters um, within the chapters that caught my attention. I love chapter mm-hmm. twelve. Um, a section that says, how to just be yourself. That's a question, really. It's placed there as a question. You outline some of the ways, and you have been talking already about know what you want. That's the number one thing to do. And then you talk about being authentic as well and communicate with your positive feelings or coming Mm -hmm. from that place. So that caught my attention. How do we actually recognize in ourselves when we are being authentic? How would you describe that, Mina? For me, authentic, Valeria, is to not be afraid uh, to say what you think, but in a way that won't hurt people. Uh, Like I just go back to the phrase that my husband um, say uh, a long time ago, everything can be say, it depends how you say it. So to be authentic for me is um, not allowing people to um, to um, frustrate you, not allowing people to diminish you. Uh, of course, uh, when people diminish you, you get angry, you get frustrated, and you want to fight back, right? But if you take it as in a way that it's their perception, it's, it's not your perception, it's not you, it's their thinking, it's their program, it's nothing to do with you, it's everything to do with them. So if you have, you can have that mindset of, authenticity um, of knowing who you are, then you can detach from those emotions that people uh, um, offense you. Um, so uh, for me, whenever people offense me or say something bad about me, um, I just tell myself it's them is not me, but not in a way that you have to tolerate them to diminish you. If if they diminish you, you have the right to say it. Whatever you do, I don't like it. I just tell you that. That is my message for you. But I still love you. And it's hard to do that, right? Somebody gets you angry and diminish you. It's hard to say to, to them like that. But you have to practice to say it or don't say it and just be indifferent about that. But but let them know that that bother you so that they don't repeat it after. Because if you don't let them know that something bother you, they will repeat it. They will get into the habit of of making you smaller than them. Mm. 
Yeah, and that's, that's not true. what you want, right? I love that what your husband said about everything can be said is just the way we say it, right? That makes mm-hmm. a big difference. I agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love this idea that we can respond to others in a non-personal way. If that is coming from that place that you speak of, the soul, the spirit, because mm-hmm. the spirit's not personal. It's not a person. Yeah. So that makes so much sense. The other one that you mentioned, another way of being yourself that caught my attention was anytime you feel negative, you know that you are in a resistant mode. <laughs> yes. Ah, that is so <laughs> true. Huh? Gosh, that caught my attention immediately. <laughs> Because that's a beautiful way of knowing that we are in the fear mode, resistant mode. Wow. Yes. Because everything, if you put yourself in a resistant mode, you are attracting to you more and more of it and you will create momentum, synergy, right? So whenever you feel fear, frustrated, angry, unsure, and insecure, those are resistance emotion. And recognize it, um, be aware of it, and to pinpoint it. Uh, know what makes you feel so. What what is the fear? Where it has come from? What happened? I wasn't fearful like a few minutes ago. Now I, I feel fear. What happened? So if you can pinpoint that, then then and you bring yourself to the next level in the Abraham Hicks scale, emotional scale, then you can get out of that situation of resistance. In chapter 11, you write something that caught my attention too. You say, you're not asking others to change to make you happy. You are the only one who can make you happy by changing your thinking about others. That's yes. a powerful message too. I'm glad that you caught that one. <laughs> yeah, I love the reflections that you have in the end, of course, of each chapter too, as an exercise to explore more our emotions and feelings and find who we are. But this really, it's another passage that caught my attention. And then chapter nine, you talk about self-discipline. That was another one that caught my attention. And there you mm-hmm. mention a system that's uh, called, I must have fun to delegate and eliminate That's the system. <laughs> Yet, I would love to hear more about this system, Mina. <laughs> well, that system, it just come into my mind when I write the book. I have it inspired with, um, I think I have, read, I have read it somewhere. I think with um, one of the authors, I don't remember. But I have changed it a little bit to make it my system because he, uh, um, Uh, in his system, there's not the whole thing is not there. I have added um, uh, eliminate and delegate. I think of the the the, the last two part. Anyway, uh, yes, it, it's it just follow the system. You you have to have always have fun, and in the fun you you have to know how to what are the important things that you have to focus on. And uh, if you are feeling overwhelmed, that you have to know how to delegate your work to other people. Because delegation, it takes trust, right? You have to trust people that they will do a, a, a good job for your um, business, for your, for your enterprise, uh, in order to delegate those tasks to them. So it's important to important to trust people to do it and trusting people take courage it doesn't take fear fear is not in the way <laughs> so it goes back in a way to that element of trust you talked earlier about when we desire or want something to happen then it's very important to trust just to let go of any negative feelings that will come in, in, in the way and just trust that it will come. And now you talk about trust again, trusting that others will do the work for us well. Yeah, it's the belief. Yeah, I love that. 
chapter five, you talk about my purpose in life. That's the title. And then you, mm-hmm. in, in the reflection section, you say, start from the end and define your purpose in life. Yes. I love that because that in itself already kind of clears so much. What about like the question I often ask, if I knew I would die in about a week or two, what would I change? How would I live my life until then? So that makes everything so much clearer almost instantly. That yeah, that that is that is to make you conscious about what's important for you right now. Yeah. Right. Right. What a powerful because, reflection. Yeah. Yeah, because life is just life on physical life is very short. The non-physical life is um, infinite, is e- eternity. So our experience on this planet Earth is very short. So what what can you do while you're here? Uh, what is the impact? What is your purpose? What is your mission in order to contribute to the society, to the world of, of planet Earth? We never know where we're going to go after that, after we die physically, but uh, spiritually, we're still alive forever. But we don't know where we will end up. So why we are here on this planet Earth, and I think we are living in a paradise right now. And most people don't realize that. We have the opportunity to live in both worlds the spiritual world and the non- and the physical world the physical world our physical form help to realize things that we can see through our five senses and i talk about that in my book i think i don't remember what chapter but i, I talk about that so the physical form is there to help us to realize things that we can see hear, touch, smell, taste, everything that we can see physically. The non-physical form in us, our soul, is always there with us that is helping us to realize what we want in the physical form and just get everything ready for us to have it. But it's up to us, the the, the physical form, Mm -hmm. to align with it in order to manifest it. Mm, wow, I love that. <laughs> what is not to love <laughs> about what you just said? <laughs> so this is in a way already paradise because it is the union of the physical and the spiritual. There's no separation, really. They're coming no. together as one. But in order to feel and embody that, we need to really become more aware and conscious of our spiritual beingness. You got it. You got it. So true. Oh, my God. I love your message, Min. <laughs> ah, I love that. I almost want to end like this because it's so, <laughs> it's so, I mean, it resonates true to the heart, really to the soul. It really speaks to that place within that knows that this is true. Thank yeah. you again for your work in doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you for, for passing the message to the people who are aligned with my philosophy or my teaching. Because th- this book is not um, a big one. It's just a small small one, very easy to read. And I hope people understand my message um, through my writing because uh, English is not my, my first language. And uh, I, have help, I have a lot of help from uh, my editor. But I think... Um, the, the essence of the message has passed through the book, I think. Also, there's another section in your book that you talk about your purpose. Chapter six, my mission statement and how to mm-hmm. come to that. You explain really well. And I love the way you say that there. You write, my purpose is to bring joy and happiness to others around me. And always remember to start with me first. Once I know my purpose, then I can sit down and write my mission statement. It's very clear the way you say this here, because you can't really get to the mission statement without knowing who you are and what your purpose is. In that chapter, you also outline Tony Robbins' six human needs. Then Mm -hmm. you have certainty. The second one is variety, uncertainty, and then significance, Love and connection, number four, and then growth, and then six, contribution. 
Mm-hmm. Would you like to talk for a moment about those uh, six human needs, Mina? Yes, I, I love that teaching from uh, Tony Robbins, and I heard about that on YouTube. And um, and the uh, I have elaborated a little bit more of my understanding of those needs, of human needs. Uh, so you, you cannot jump to the next level of need if your previous need is not met yet. So you have to, the first need is the um, uh, certainty, I think. Uh, yeah, certainty. So you have to be certain that you have a shelter, you have food on the table to eat, you have uh, um, uh, love, uh, and, and you have to have the basic need, human, need, human needs first. And then once that need is um, attainable, is met, then you can jump to the next level of, of need, which is uncertainty, which is the entrepreneur, the, the taking, the uh, taking risk, um, people, like uh, people who, uh, like to be uncertain to, 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 uh, adventure. So, um, that is the second one. And the third one is the, um, significant, um, some people want to be known, like to be famous. Uh, so they have to have the other two needs first in order to be to, to, to be known. But the thing is, um, in a way, that one is a bit tricky because for me, uh, to be significant, some people just want to be famous and that is not being significant. Being significant is something that is deep down more than that is to um, to know who you are and and to to be humble even though people admire you and just keep yourself humble and that is the important thing and as long as you 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 keep yourself humble you have met that need already. All right. So, uh, so that is the third one. The 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 fourth one is um, uh, love and connection. Yes. So you uh, you you can see people uh, who have all of the money, who have all of the fame in the world, and they're not happy because they don't have the love that they are uh, seeking for. So. Unless you love unconditionally, those people who have money, who 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 are having everything that they want, but they don't have the love that they want, it's just because they are too conditional for the love that they are seeking for. You are too conditional. So we are programmed to be in a conditional love kind of since we were small. So, so when we were small, we have to do something to please our parent in order to have their love back, right? So because we are uncon- unconsciously programmed like that by our uh, parents or our people around us, and, and it's not their fault, and I say it in the book, they just uh, teach us, they taught us what they have been taught from their parents. So that that love um, uh, level is you have to be put yourself in position of unconditional love in order to meet that need. As long as you are still in a conditional love, you're still needing that. You're still at that level. And then un, unless you are conscious about it and just love un, unconditionally, just give love to the people who hate you, your enemy. Like Jesus taught us, you know, love your enemy like yourself, kind of. So when you are at that level, then you have met that that need already. So those the 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 four first one are the physical needs, right? And the last two one are the kind of a spiritual needs. It's a higher level. You cannot reach 
number five and six unless you have all of the first four uh, accomplished or fulfilled. So you cannot um, grow or contribute to the society if one of the four first one is missing. Yeah, you, you cannot grow when you have conditional love, right? You have to have unconditional love. There you are, you can grow. And then once you grow, then you can contribute to the society. We can pass that on. This makes a lot of sense. I never heard about these, uh, the six human needs, according to Tony Robbins. That's the first time. And it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I love that you call the growth and contribution a spiritual way of living. This is the spiritual realm. And also love mm -hmm. and connection, of course, especially unconditional love. That's very spiritual to me. Thank you so much again, Mina, for what you <laughs> do, welcome. yeah, your work. Yeah. It's truly beautiful and resonates true. Thank you. We're almost at the end. I do have a few more questions for you, the ending questions. Would you like to add anything else before I ask you these questions? Or would you like to read the passage in your book? Um, yeah, well, in the book, uh, I think there are a lot of passages that I like, but... Um, uh, one of the messages that I want to pass to uh, the people who are listening to us is um, just one word, be conscious, like be conscious about where you are now and live in the moment. Don't bring anything in the past to the moment because some people, some, some, somebody make you angry yesterday and most of us, we bring it to today and we think about it and we pass it on to tomorrow kind of and we still think about that thing that bothered us right so we still live in the past most of the time the important thing is to just let it go just let it go forgive and forget and that will make you feel lighter make you feel more serene make you feel more at peace with yourself like I, I, I have a friend yesterday, uh, we, ha we had a storm this week and his, her son cannot come to her because her son house has, uh, has uh, electricity cut down and at her how to. And she, she is an old lady and she was waiting for her son to come in. Their connection is not possible through, through the electronic devices um, anyway. So she, she was sad that her son didn't come to, to, to help her. And I tell her, well, don't wait for other people to make you happy. It's just a perception from your thinking. Just make yourself happy and that's in, that's all. Because the minute that you wait for other people to make you happy, you're waiting, you will wait for a long time and you will have that burden on you. And there's nothing to do with them. It's everything to do with your thinking and your perception. And why are you doing that to you? Aren't you loving yourself? So when you love yourself, you just be happy with yourself. Don't sabotage yourself or don't put yourself in a situation of unhappiness. It's not worth it. Wow, that's another powerful message. So my ending question is, I'll end with this question and then I have a technical one. What is another word for life? What comes to mind? Life is joys, happiness, peace. Life is um, living in the now. And before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Um, people can connect with me on my website, minavocoaching.com. For the book, I am um, building a website for the book now, which is startwithmebook.com. Um, I'm going to send you the link for that. Um, so I'm working on it right now, and it should be finishing this week or next week. But if, pe if people cannot get um, to me via that website, then they always have MinaVocoaching.com that they can connect with me uh, through email or 
I think I have my phone number on there too, but through email is better. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. I'll have that website on your podcast profile and add the new one when it's ready, Mina. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much again for your presence in our reality, for your message, your wisdom, and for this continuous collaboration with the podcast. Thank you so much again for who you are. And we'll talk soon. And thank you, Valeria, for your work, for your dedication to help the authors to bring the message to the world. And your work is not smaller than our work. And I thank you for that. Thank you for taking your time for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. Bye for now. Take good care. We'll talk soon. Bye, Valeria. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Mina Vo and her work, please visit minavocoaching.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.